American Go Association. I'm Chris Garlock, Managing Editor of the AGA E-Journal. Joined once again by Michael Redman, Nine Don Professional. Today, Michael will be reviewing another AlphaGo Zero versus AlphaGo Master game. As always, before we get started, I want to thank all our AGA members. And if you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. All right, Michael, another uh, much awaited uh, AlphaGo Zero game. As uh, I think you know, our, our fans have been really wanting more. They want more Zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's more coming. Um, so in this game, uh, Zero has black, and Master is playing with white. And we're going to see um, this big fight where there's this group of Zeros that looks like it's about to die. And it's just floating, floating around in the middle of uh, Master's Moyo. And Zero doesn't seem to be worrying very much because it plays away <laughs> and does all sorts of stuff. So I we're going to see wait. that kind of fight. Yeah. All right. So it's going to be, yeah, there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff happening here. Of course, the opening is going to be the same. Right. As always, jumping into the through three point. <clears throat> um, and again, like this is something that I've tried once in a tournament game, and I sort of regretted that. So I'm, I'm not going to be playing the 3-3 Invasion very much. But it ha is becoming popular, and so it's something that we have to be um, ready for. For instance, if uh, if I'm playing a star point, then I have to be aware of the fact that there's going to be some players who will be playing this Invasion. And it's not as if the... Um, it's not as good for white as we used to think it should be like it, it's an even result here in the upper left corner interesting and it's starting to look even to me also even though i don't want to jump into the three three point <laughs> give it time give it time yeah and there's this curl here i think um the curl the timing of this curl can be changed uh one move back like sometimes um zero will just go ahead and crawl once more with this move um but the point of this is that white doesn't have that stone um, on the side, like if white has a stone somewhere around here, I think black would feel free to play um, play the Hanetsugi. So let's just, um, why don't we go back one move and make a variation. Like if white has a stone at this point, then it, it would be okay, um, relatively okay for black to play this. Um, assuming we have a white stone uh, somewhere around here, in which case white would have a slightly over-concentrated position. But okay. without that stone in the middle of the side, um, this just gives white control over the whole side. This exchange of the um, uh, up to the um, up to this move. This this just gives white too much strength <clears throat> on the side. So it makes sense to me that black is not playing that Hanesugi, and instead instead will be um, playing a, cr a crawling move. So um, the timing of this changes sometimes. Even zero um, doesn't seem to be sure whether to play it immediately or for to wait one move. But the moment white plays this approach move in the upper right, um, it plays it anyway. So this is a pattern that there's very slight difference here in the order of moves, but it doesn't really mean very much. Okay. So this is where the game uh, starts to change a lot. Uh, yeah. This is a position where I put a lot of letters on the board, so I'll talk about that. <laughs> Um, so there's A and B, uh, two pincers that Zero actually played. Um, and in fact, the pincer in this game on the third line is pretty unusual. It's the only game in the 20-game set that Zero actually played here. Hmm. So it's, it's unusual. It looks like a feasible pincer to me. So I also added C and D, which are pincers that a human player would be thinking of playing. Um, so there's a group of pincers there. Black doesn't really feel like answering on the upper side, uh, from my viewpoint, although that would be maybe a feasible move too. Um, since white has that wall on the left there, it doesn't look like it's a very, it's a, it doesn't look like an area where black can really build, build on um, the upper side. So black does sort of, I have the feeling that black wants to play on the right side, a pincer here. So any of those moves look okay to me. And yeah. I would have trouble um, saying which is the best. Yeah, also and apparently, yeah. Well, they Go extend ahead. nicely from from Black's framework on the lower side too, right? Yeah, it, yeah, that's where Black wants to build something, so that's why it makes sense. Um, so they all look good to, and of course, Zero is playing um, A and B also. So ver uh, this is a, a point where Zero also 
feels that it can vary and it has a different result um, sort of on depending on how smooth that day. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a difference um, when it does the um, the searches for its next moves and um, some of that can be a bit random in, in the way the percentages come out. Like mm. if it gets good results for a certain move, that move will sort of take the lead and have a high percentage of um, searches also, I think. The way I understand the way the program works. Okay. Um, and so now this is really, so as I said, this is the only time in the series that uh, Zero played here. And so um, there's only one example for what Master might do. But uh, playing this uh, Kahari here in the lower right, when Black already has a stone at A, uh, it looks like it uh, is going to be attacked immediately. So it's it's a move where I would be thinking of playing a White's uh, move at B, which is seen in al almost all of the other games where Master has White. So we've gone mm -hmm. into that before, and we'll be going into it again, um, let's see, on the even games. The even games mm -hmm. are when Master has White. Um, so in a lot of a very large percentage of those games, we're going to see White playing the double Kafari at B. Um, although that's with a different pincer, the the stone at C, the black stone at C is going to be slightly different place. Mm. So black kicks here. This is um, the Kosumitsuke in Japanese. Um, I'm still not familiar with the word kick, but that's the way people say it now, isn't it? Yes, it and is. It looks like it looks like White has a very heavy shape here. Um, but then this is a very um, a typical kind of <coughs> master type of move. It's, it's a move that it's a shoulder hit and it's a move that is trying to press from above. Um, so this is a very um, characteristic move that master is playing here. And just to show what master wants to do, um, master wants to play this exchange from above. Um, and this whole exchange here, locally, it's kind of a joseki on the side of the board shape. Um, it's a it's a kind of sequence there that you see a lot in professional games. Um, and the final move there, White plays a hanging connection to get a relatively light shape and to um, start to dominate the center. And that move, that stone at A is going to be killed probably, but White does have the option of jumping in the corner at B. So it's not going to be a wasted stone. So the idea here is White is um, starting to control the center and that means that even Black's territory in the lower right corner is, is not, uh, there's still that invasion in the 3-3 three, three point. Let's mark the 3-3 three, three point just to, yeah. That there's this invasion here. Right. And so Black doesn't really have um, so much advantage in territory. So that's what White is trying to do. Uh, this is what, the, it seems to be the natural move for Black to be thinking of. So this is where uh, zero plays something very different here, playing mm -hmm. away from the uh, shoulder hit. It's it seems it's sort of counterintuitive. You you've just seen black played here just now, and then black it looks like black is offering up that stone. So it, mm -hmm. it does look a bit strange, but it happens to be a very good time to for black to start this thing in the upper right corner, because locally white sort of wants to play the honey here. This is mm -hmm. the sequence that you would see. If you're if you're just looking at the corner there, this is the best move for white, and black will cut, and white can scoop out the corner like this. White can move into the corner, and uh, this double honey here, um, it's a it's sort of automatic for a pro, I guess, but um, maybe some people will find it interesting that this is the tesuji here. It's a double honey. Black is mm -hmm. sacrificing the stone, and black is setting up a squeeze here, like um, forces white to play the tari. And we'll cover from here. And all of these forcing moves have given Black a very strong shape. And so um, when White plays that honey in, at A, let's just go back to that move just so show, show what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this honey, this honey here. When White plays this honey, this whole sequence to this point is sort of forced mm -hmm. um, because Black cuts at B. And now that white stone at D has become wasted, like black mm -hmm. just jumps out, this final move here at C, jumping out. Um, and you can see black sort of has a connected shape there already. So that white stone at D has become completely wasted. Wow. And the upper right corner, although white has gotten the territory, black has outside influence. That's a shape that is usually considered to be about an even result. Like it, you could probably find it in Joseki books. Mm -hmm. 
And so that, that exchange of white D for black C is really bad for white. So that's why, uh, that's how this move here, uh, this attachment is working because the, the most natural local response for white is to play the honey here and that leads to a bad result. So um, white covers from above. Um, so uh, white has created a strong group, but in the um, meantime, black has created a kind of an ideal territory in the upper right corner that's already looking like it's about 20 points. So instead of playing at B, black has gotten this sequence of two moves in a row in the upper right corner, which is very effective. Mm. And so I, I sort of like this for black. It's a it's, it's a it's a well played exchange. The overall result is probably uh, fairly even, but this sequence here, um, although like the, it's it's something that you um, would be easy for a human pro to miss because when white plays here, there's a very strong tendency to answer that directly. Mm -hmm. and playing mm -hmm. this way and getting this um, this two moves in a row in the upper right corner. Um, is actually a pretty good result for black. So um, I, I originally found it a bit surprising, and then when I sort of dug into it, um, I was very impressed by the way black handled this. The timing is really nice too, right? You have to wait for this move because this is the stone that becomes completely wasted right. when you get into that variation. Uh, let's see if I can find it, this variation here. Um, that's, that's the stone at D that has become wasted. Mm. So important that black waits for white to play that move mm -hmm. to make it most most effective. Wow. And so this is an example of how zero, and this is something that we, <clears throat> kind of a very sharp quality that was not so prominent in the previous versions of AlphaGo. And mm -hmm. um, I, I'm seeing that as a, a super, superiority in its ability to calculate. So mm -hmm. it's um, what a human would call reading abilities. Mm -hmm. Um, because it really doesn't, it, it's really good at um, handling very, very complicated fights, which was probably, uh, it was not true of the Lee Sedell version, for instance. Wow. And Master sort of, uh, there was a lot of factors with Master that um, could have made a difference. For instance, it was playing with a very, a relatively short time limit. Right. And, um, and it was winning very easily against the human players, mm -hmm, which means mm -hmm. uh, maybe it had different reasons to be keeping out of the more complicated variations. Hmm. Because it was winning anyway, it, it might find a, a, a safer way to win in some cases. Right. Um, but so I'm not sure about Mount Master, but I do get the uh, general impression that Master was sort of keeping out uh, away from the really complicated fights too. Right, and that changed a bit later in the in the later versions of Master that I'm calling the KJ version, where there is a lot more calculating power, and it, in the self-played games, we're, we were seeing a lot of fighting. Yeah, we were. But, uh, but this is very it's it's I get the stronger impression with zero that it's very sharp in this kind of fight. Mm. So now now the fight switches to the left side of the board. Um, instead of uh, surrounding, like uh, on the left side, like one thing that white could do would be to play somewhere around here, which would create a nice moyo on the left. Uh, but instead of doing that, master is trying to be a bit more efficient by starting with attacking black. And white's idea is that white's going to be surrounding the left side uh, while hopefully um, having an advantage in this fight starting from the lower side. And so black peeps there. And this is something that zero just does. And if white answers at B, it does it in connection with that Joseki in the upper left where black has jumped into the three, three point. If white answers at B, <coughs> uh, I would agree that it's probably a Kikashi. And um, AlphaGo doesn't answer like, like that. AlphaGo will right. always, almost always jump to the, somewhere on the left side. And so now the question is, um, is that going to be a wasted peep? Because for the time being, it looks like it would be an overplay for Black to cut it B. Um, but Black is going to be looking at that Aji. And so it's a kind of a position where the only thing I can say is that it's going to depend on what happens in the future of the game, like how Black handles that. Because um, 
it's very easy for that black stone to be sort of wasted and turn into mochikomi, a move that gives white some extra territory. But Zero, Zero is very good at making use of that stone later in the game. Hmm. Um, and so now this is very good shape for white. This this Kosumi here, the diagonal move that white has just played, um, is a kind of a standard move in this position where white is getting rid of Daji at A. So I could I could I could put a variation in, for instance, like if black jumps in here. Um, when something like this happens, um, it becomes apparent that white has played this move here has become a hanging connection. So that that's how this stone is working. Mm -hmm. And it gets rid of um, all sorts of bad odds because that position, that shape in the corner is a dead shape for black. Right. Um, but it could have turned into a, a um, semi if white had not had that extra stone. So that's what that what this move was about. And black jumps again. And black has a, already has a very thin shape. Like uh, this two space jump is not 100% connected. Um, but white really needs to prepare to take advantage of that. So that's what uh, that's what this move is. White's looking at the attachment of B. So this jump that white has just played here and the Kosumi at A, um, they're both <coughs> in the attachment of B, which will be able to cut black off. Um, so, you know, zero doesn't care. Zero At this point, zero is willing to throw away that uh, those two stones if white's going to go after them. And this move that zero has just played has the double effect of um, reinforcing the lower right corner um, because black did have to worry about a through three invasion here. So this that gets rid of a lot of the trouble there too. Um, very similar to the, the white move that uh, white played here. It's a very similar meaning. It's not quite a complete, as complete uh, um, defense. Because there is right. some, still some bad odds in that corner. But when you count in the fact that this white group here that I'm going to mark to is weak also, um, well, it's probably not advisable for white to be jumping into the corner right now. For the So it's a kind of a, a quick fix for the time being. And also it's reducing the value of uh, these black stones on the left because um, the side is sort of open underneath. So it's, it's not so valuable for white to go after those two stones anymore. So white jumps jumps here at the uh, is this the seventh line, and again this mm. is still looking at that weakness there, still looking at the weakness here, um, but it's more focusing on attacking the whole black group as a whole. So black uh, floats around in the center a bit, and this is a position where um, black has a lot of territory. We can already look at something close to twenty points in the upper right corner something mm -hmm. close to 10 points in the upper left <clears throat> corner. And again, it's something close to 20 points in the lower right corner. So Black's looking at um, something close to 50 points. Right. Definitely more than 40. Um, and White only has, if we're looking at territory, the only territory is the lower left corner for White. Mm -hmm. So that's something like 20 points maybe. So Black has a big advantage in territory and this extremely weak group, um, which I would be worried about. And so uh, white forces <laughs> with this. And then uh, this is a very patient move. This is a point where, like, for instance, I would be thinking of just cutting off these stones or something like that. Yeah, me but too. As I said, zero is prepared, uh, prepared to sacrifice them in some of the cases. Um, so uh, instead, white plays, uh, presses on the upper left, and that has made that black peep a bad move uh, by capturing it from outside. Even though it costed white two moves, white has played two moves to surround that black stone. Um, it's sort of worth it. It's a lot of territory sticking mm -hmm. to that. And it also has the effect of uh, attacking black's group in the center. Right. So it's, it's a nice move. And now black plays here. Now with this move, um, it's sort of directly looking at that peep at A. So that's one way that black can make eyes now. And also black is looking at the invasion at C or uh, starting with an attachment at B sometimes. So with this um, Sargari to the second line, um, Black has pretty much made eyes for that that um, group on on the in the lower left area. But it, as I was saying, it's still not completely connected. There's still the uh, potential for White to cut it off here, 
Um, but the difference is that it's gonna, black's gonna be able to make a life this time. So instead, white is still trying to attack the whole group. This is a very sharp move with which white is trying to um, re reduce the amount of space that black has. And directly, um, immediately white is threatening to cut black off here. So you would expect black to answer directly, but instead zero does this. So there's all sorts of <coughs> big moves here. Like there's there's a kind of a two groups. Black is already sort of um, divided into two groups almost with the group at A and the group at B. Um, and white has big moves at C or D, but with this attachment, um, in the upper left, the upper left area is really heated up too. It's an important area too. And so it's it's like an um, it's hard to see where the head and tail is. Like it's it's hard to see what what you want to bite off. But for the yeah. time being, I think this upper left area is is important enough that White <laughs> probably has to answer it. So it's again this the way Master is playing. Um, is something that looks looks pretty reasonable. It looks some, like something that's easy for me to agree with. Yeah, this is reminding me of, um, I saw a video on YouTube recently about uh, octopus. It's an octopus, yeah, yeah, with all those legs in different areas, yeah. Well, and also the thing about octo, octopi, octopuses, I'm not sure. I but, octopi is correct, yeah. Yeah, but the thing about it is that, you know, they're they're pretty big, but they can squeeze through like, these really tiny, yeah. tiny areas. And I, I have this feeling that that may yeah. be happening here too. Yeah, something like that. And so this is the game move where black plays a honey. Um, and it looks really dangerous. So yeah. uh, zero is trying to be sort of super efficient here. Uh, and this is the move that looks safe. Um, but it's a bit, it's, it's a bit heavy, you mm. might say. And the, um, the point is, partly, I'm going to start by making the point that um, bumping against white here, although it connects black in the center, it still doesn't do anything for this weakness. So um, since black has this, the potential of being cut off at this mark point, mm -hmm. black really wants to be sort of free in the way it handles the rest of the stones too. So, so that's where this... Um, super efficient move comes in. But just to show you uh, what I would expect to happen, this would be the safe way for black to play, and then something like this, maybe something like this. Um, and then white would probably return to the lower left corner um, to, to make that a territory. And of course, once white plays this final move, this move here, um, that means that when white does cut off these, these black stones, they're gonna die this um, so it's taking away the eyes of Black's entire group. Black will be able to live. We can see in the vicinity of that move at A, Black already has something that looks like an eye. So it's going to be fairly easy for Black to live. But White's probably going to get something. We can see the center is starting to look uh, sort of white now. So White's going to mm -hmm. get something. So this would be a game where Black would still be slightly ahead <laughs> in territory, but uh, White would have potential to catch up in territory, and it would be a um, a relatively peaceful game, maybe. <laughs> um, that's not, what, that's not the way so. Zero does it. Um, and so Black plays this Hane, and White connects. And for the time being, there's a cut at A and there's a Hane at B. So it's uh, right. it's not going to work that easily for Black. But Black then curls around here. And if White extends, now it's going to be like this, and White's going to cut. And it's quite similar to the previous variation, only there's that cutting stone at A, which is going to cost White a move or two to, to finish off. So um, that's how this is. Um, and in the previous variation, it was quite similar. It was similar, only there was that black stone at the mark point here. Right. Having that stone instead of the mark point, having it at A is giving more trouble to White. It's going to cost White, um, like if White plays if white plays here, that, that stone is still on the board. It's going to make trouble later. White's going to have to add a stone at some point. Um, that's the way black's going to do it, you might say. And if white plays here, then black gets this Atari. So black's going to get something out of that cunning stone. And so I think this is um, more efficient for black. So this is what black is sort of aiming at. And that's why uh, master plays away at this point, just to uh, cut off the center stones. 
And so um, white has cut off the two stones in the center, and those two stones are probably going to die. Um, and in return, black is going to capture that marked white stone. Mm -hmm. So just to show you what master was going to do if white played here, uh, let's see, I made a variation for that. We're going to get a fight sort of like this. So white could have connected the one stone, but those three stones in the center are fairly strong. And now black's going to play here. This is going to connect all of the black stones. And you don't really see any eyes, do you? No, uh, but, I <laughs> No, I see no eyes. I see zero uh, eyes. But when the black does stuff like this, um, it's not as if this group is going to die. Like there's um, there's some there's an eye in the corner too, and so that black group at B, when white plays A, black is getting a, fairly, a relatively strong group at B, which is going to be fairly hard for white to kill. And so um, after that, black is just going to continue making eyes. And then it's a question of, of can black kill those black stones in the center or not? This is the white it stones. looks like it's a close fight. I, I would be willing to try this out with white. So it's something that Master could have done, I think. But right. um, instead of doing that, um, I wouldn't go as far to say that uh, playing this extra move in the center is bad because this gives white a stronger position in the center. And you know, I, I would still be very worried about this black group, like it has. Um, it is finally connected, but again, there's no point. Um, there, I can't see any eyes for this group yet. Mm -mm. It doesn't have any eyes at all. Mm -mm. So it's very similar to the variation I was just showing you, only white's not cut off in the center. Like in that variation, black had uh, cut white off in the center. Right. So white has to worry about this group in the lower, sort of on the lower side here. Whereas in the game, um, let's. I've jumped forward a few moves, haven't I? In the game, um, white is not cut off in the center yet, so um, that makes it slightly better for white, I think. So with this move, black has moved out. Um, if white answers here, I would expect zero to continue to add moves to this group to make it alive. At least that's what I would do. Um, you know, I'm I'm sort of doubting it because zero seems so easy about this group. It doesn't seem to be worrying at all, and you're going to see it playing away pretty soon. No. <laughs> so instead of doing this, this would be the straightforward move, um, but then black would continue to make a life. So white yeah. plays here. White's trying to get something in the lower right <clears throat> corner by being a bit more efficient here than playing just the straightforward move. But this gives Black the opportunity to play here. Um, and this is slightly ouch, ouch. troublesome. It is, um, Black is looking to play at A, um, the next chance Black has. And if Black does get a stone at A, White's going to have to connect at B. So forcing that sort of dummy point on White is something that Black is looking <clears> for. <throat> let, me, let me just ask you something here. Um, I mean, you, you ha I don't really want to ask you how many hours you put into analyzing this game, but this this strikes me as incredibly complicated. Would would you want to be trying to do this reading in like a tournament game? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is so worrying for Black. I would be, yeah. Well, um, I would be feeling a bit more safe when playing this knight's move. Um, but um, and for the time being, Black does have a lot of territory, so I would be under pressure whichever color I took. Yeah, because um, white has to worry about how to catch up in territory in this game. White black does still have something close to 50 points if we're going to have all of these black territories remain safe. So right. white has to get something back at some point. And that and really this move is a kind of demonstration of the fact that white is trying to do that. But uh, then black peeps out here. I would be really worried about this black group on the left. Um, white jumps here. This is forcing black. And we can see that um, left side area, black doesn't really have any eyes to speak of. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to see where black is trying to make eyes in this game. That's the point. And so this is an important, uh, white doesn't want to allow black to play at the point white just played. This is an important right. point. And black continues to play in the lower left corner and then here. And so uh, black po pokes his um, hit out here. Um, this is a bit troublesome. Uh, and I'll just mark the board up a little bit again. 
this stone here um, has not completely lost its value. And we're mm -hmm. going to see this stone come back into play um, when Black tries to make a squeeze. Um, White plays the knight's move here. With this move, it's going to be very difficult for Black to squeeze out towards the upper right. Like Black's um, friendly stones in the upper right corner are a bit too far away. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be tough for Black to get out there, but it is an op um, something that is potentially going to happen. But we can see with this nice move that what White is trying to do is White is trying to build a territory in the center sure. in the meanwhile. So Black pushes that out. So this is um, having the um, one effect of this move is that Black is pushing out to reduce White's territory in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, Zero is trying to set a set up an attack on White's group on the right, too. Right. So <clears throat> we're, we have to bear that in mind, because this is something that Zero is already thinking of doing. And um, also, uh, White's connection there on the lower side is a bit weak. So White um, adds a stone here. And then you can see Black is already uh, just leaving that group on the left. You know, I, I don't. Um, I had a lot of trouble seeing where Zero is trying to make eyes in this game. Mm. Uh, it, it's just very difficult to see it at this point. But um, lucky for us, Master actually tries to seems to try to be killing it. So we're going to see um, in action how Zero is going to make eyes. It's, we're going to see it in the game, which is a lot easier for me when I don't have to build that variation up. Uh, That's probably so. why they did that. Yeah, yeah. Master Master helped me out by playing out some of the variations in which it tries to kill Black. And so Black is just continuing to attack here on the left. And with this move, um, part of it is this is um, established that Black is sort of out into the center. And it also is has uh, locally has killed the white group on the right. Like there's no way that White's going to make two eyes there now. Uh, white can make one eye, but by capturing that black stone on the right side, but it's not going to be two eyes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so now, yeah. So this this move is um, sort of established a little white territory in the center of the board, and it makes all of those white stones safe. So white is sort of um, <coughs> building strength here to be able to attack black on the left side. So this is where uh, this stone here. Um, which is one of the most difficult moves that Zero plays every time, this peep here, um, if you recall. It's, it, this is an example of how it's making use of it, because with this black is looking at various squeezes. And one factor that is going to come back to us again later is the fact that if black has a forcing move at A, black's going to be able to build an eye there. So that's, um, right. that's a fake eye there. It's a... Um, it's a false eye for the time being, but um, it's an eye that, um, and also there's another factor here. Um, I'm getting carried away here, but there's another factor that these three stones, when white starts playing, uh, when the players start filling in these dame here, these three white stones are going to be uh, losing some liberties, mm -hmm. and that's going to change how the fighting in the center of the board happens. Okay. So with all of, all of oh, sorry. With all of this stuff happening, um, this point at A actually has a, a great difference in um, Black's eyes. Like it, uh, if Black gets to force with A, that's going to be pretty close to a sente one eye with sente for Black, mm. just because of that Damas I was for that White has with these three stones that I was just talking about. And so that's one of the things that Black is trying to do, and White curls around. But also, it turns out Black is going to be looking at a squeeze from on the left side, which I'm going to talk about later. Okay. And so Zero just plays away again. Um, <laughs> and so finally, <laughs> Master is getting a bit angry with Zero, I suppose. <laughs> and White jumps here. Now, this jump on the second line. Um, this is a very important move, which takes away all of Black's eyes on the side. So up to this point, Black did have um, an eye there, at least. So when White jumps here, now Black has no eyes on the right side of that Black group. Well, because so, I think the, the deal was that that uh, Master gave Zero the group on the right. Uh -huh. So supposed to get the group on the left, right? 
Well, you know, actually, it turns out in this game, white does capture about um, most of this black group. Okay. Uh, but that was, it was, it's already a losing variation at that point. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It was, it was all, um, you know, part of Zero's plan. Right. Um, because Zero is grabbing a lot, like the, the right side white group is already one move away about from dying. Right, black right, right. One more move maybe to kill that white group. And these are all moves where even a, a human pro, a human, a pro player would be so worried about this black group that a uh, human player would be hesitating to be playing away so much and going after that white group on the right side. Um, especially when uh, I get the feeling that black already had a lead in territory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would be trying just to live on the left side. Um, and then the process, black would probably be giving something back to white and the game could, could get fairly close. So that's what Zero is avoiding here by being super greedy and just taking everything on the right side of the board. So now black really has to start worrying because black doesn't have, um, black has zero eyes at this point. So Wait, black starts with this attack. Zero, do you think zero oh, has zero oh, eyes? Zero, that's zero, yeah, well, maybe <laughs> that's why I like zero eyes. So black starts by squeezing with this from the center. Um, and uh, so this is the variation. This is where white played. And so this allows black to jump out here. And this is not really connected. But again, in the process of cutting it off, white's going to have to give black uh, this forcing move. Mm -hmm. um, because if we if we imagine a black zone at this point, then it will be connected. Right. Um, so if white tries to cut black off here, um, in the process, black is going to be able to make an eye, an eye here. This is the plan that black has. So there's the question: Well, what if white plays on the outside with this move? Um, what is black trying to do? And again, it has to do with this eye in the center, but it also has to do with a squeeze on the left side, which I'm going to show you here. So this is another way that Black was going to make use of this Aji here. Black's going to cover here. And for the time being, Black has four liberties and White has three. So this is the key point for White to win the semi here. And White's going to win by one move. But you can see uh, Zero is getting two squeezes out of this. Because C is oh, going to be a force. Nicely move. done. Nicely yeah. done. Wow. I, I actually did that. But of course, I had to have Zero's game to show me that it was going to happen. So this is because I had Beautiful. I had to figure out why White did not, why, why White played underneath there. And so this is the explanation that I found. Black, Black is looking at this squeeze from underneath with this, this move, which nice. would give Black a living shape. Yeah. And so White plays underneath. Um, and zero jumps out for so for the time being it looks like black is trying to escape there, and white finishes up um, mm. again um, with this cut here and stuff like that with this cutting point here and there's still a cutting point here. Um, white has to be sort of careful too. So white is reinforcing the center group and saying I'm going to kill that black group with the next move maybe. Um, and so black jumps in here. And finally, zero is um, looking like it's trying to make eyes. Um, and then here, <coughs> and this is actually um, almost a double threat. And also, it, uh, it's threatening the wedge here for the time being. So threatening to cut black off there. Right. So black answers that, and then white connects. And so, um, black is not completely connected still. Like if black plays away now, white can cut black off here. So this this would not kill the entire group. Black would be able to live here, uh, but this center part of the group is mm -hmm. it looks pretty hopeless to me. So um, this is how white can cut black off. So uh, zero actually adds a move. So finally zero is starting to add some moves to this black group. Um, but this is actually threatening to make a life in the corner, too. So it has something to do with black size. So at this point, um, although Zero has played away a lot, uh, this is starting to look like a living group to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Because um, one th for one thing, black can make a life in the, on the side. Otherwise, if black adds a move here in the center, black's going to be able to 
run out into the center. So white plays here. This is a big territory move. Um, and what black is threatening is black is threatening to play here in the corner. And now it's alive in the corner. Nice. So that's one way that black can live. So black plays away. You know, black is alive, has a life in the corner. Sure. And um, and so why not play away? And, and now this white group on the right side of the board is starting to look like it's dead. So black finishes it up. So um, this is sort of making sure white does not make any eyes on the right side. And by creating a cutting point here, um, black seems to be dealing with the bad Aji on the outside because there's uh, th these stones on the outside um, have a very, very loose connection in, in mm -hmm. all. There's a lot of mm -hmm. uh, sort of potential cutting points there, which I think black is handling indirectly with this move on the second line which is creating a, a cutting point here. So why does, uh, this is actually uh, more than anything else, it's why it's creating co-threats. And I wouldn't be surprised if master knows that there's a co um, in the equation already, um, but it's not really apparent to a human at this point. Mm, really? So uh, this is a very interesting move here. And the way master answered it, Although it looks obvious, right? Yeah. This is a point where I had this big question, um, partly because I was seeing, uh, well, you see this move, we're gonna see it in the game, but this move uh, is not a perfect uh, connection when black lives in the corner. So I was thinking maybe this is better. Mm. Um, and so I'll show you why. Uh, when white plays here, this cuts black off in the center. This is, um, cutting off that escape route. For instance, uh, if black plays something like this, white can cut it off with this. So there's no way out that way. Um, but And black will continue in the corner. So we see the advantage of this mark zone in this variation, because now black has a completely connected position. Right. And that, that wouldn't be true if, black, if that stone was here, which is what we're gonna see in the game. Interesting. Um, so why why didn't uh, zero do that? And the reason is that when white takes black's eyes away, instead of instead of uh, surrounding from the center, when white takes black's eyes away, this becomes a forcing move. Now this is a very important for forcing move because black was still trying to make use of the odds of these three marked stones. Um, uh -huh. And so this is a forcing move because it threatens a co when white throws in at this point. So black has to answer that. Uh -huh. Is that apparent? Maybe I should make a variation for that. Yeah, yeah, Do you think yeah. I should make a variation? Probably. So like if black it's... plays away, white can throw in here, yeah. and this becomes a co for black to connect. Nice, so, nice. Um, so that is the difference that we're seeing here. Um, because that's that's not going to happen when black plays this move. That's not going to be forcing. So when white uh, takes black's eyes away from the corner, white has this forcing move. Um, and white will not be able to kill the black group outright. But when white tries to save the group on the right, it's going to make a lot of trouble for black because that mm -hmm. is a eyeless black group that's fl floating around. Black has about um, black can make one eye but that's all that black can make for the time being. So black's gonna still have to worry about that black group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about when I say black, black can make one eye, it's because black has a forcing move here. Um, right. So black can make an eye there. So in the game, AlphaGo is um, getting into a code to cut off the whole center um, black group in the center on purpose. It doesn't, it doesn't care about that group anymore because it's, um, I think white, I think black is already in a winning variation at this point. Um, and you might have noticed I'm having trouble finding where I would have played differently with master. Yeah. So it's um, it's really astounding how zero could handle this group. So uh, with these few moves here, white is just trying to create some Aji here and black is just handling it. Black is not completely connected, um, but since like white could continue with this, and cut here, um, which would create some trouble, but um, 
black always has this final cutting point here. So it's, it's going to be difficult for white to save the whole group in any case. Um, wow, so, wow, wow. so this is what's happening on the right side. Um, and now white pushes through. Again, if black extends at A, white can cut off with B. So this cuts black off here. And black goes for a life in the corner. And this is where you see the disadvantage of that move at A. Because if that stone was at B, everything would be connected. Mm -hmm. But now it's going to be a call. Um, so I was wondering if maybe zero had made a mistake, but it turns out that um, this is the, e the best way to win the game, um, because the other way would have been more dangerous. Well, 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 how does that figure? OK, it gets back to the, this, this point. So, so this is where I was really confused about the difference between this move and this move. Um, and the, the reason I didn't like this move um, was because white does get to cut off the center with a coal. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And so that's why I didn't like this, <clears throat> uh, because white gets this co in the center. Right. But it turns out that other variation when black plays that move, when white gets to, to this forcing move at B, um, why don't we go through it one move at a time? When black plays here and white plays uh, this way, uh, then white gets that extra forcing move here, um, which gives white a very strong position in the center and I think this variation is actually more dangerous for black because white's threatening to save the oh, whole right. Oh, I, I see what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah. white is still aiming to kill that black group. So there's still some danger there. So this is actually more dangerous mm, than mm, losing mm. half the group in a call because there's no way white, black's going to win this call. Right. Um, let's get back to the game variation. Black's not going to win this call. Um, black is forced to make eyes in the corner. But white has so many co threats on the right side of the board. Right. And right, that's right. what white was doing. That, that's what white was doing with this invasion at the 3 3 point that wasn't working. White's creating some co threats. Um, and white's creating big co threats that black will have to answer. Right. Um, and so white's going to win this one. White's going to capture this whole group in the center of the board. But it's not going to be good. <laughs> and that's so. Deep. That is so deep. Yeah. And so that's master's plan. It's not working well because um, zero, I think zero is sort of gritted out, you might say, or, or has better uh, positional judgment maybe, or maybe just better reading. I don't know what the difference is, but um, zero seems to have, uh, seems to be ready for this variation, even though it knows it's not going to win the call. White has all sorts of call threats. What's Black the, has uh... a lot of call what, what's the uh, what's the damage on the lower left for to black? What's the point damage? Well, in the lower left corner, blacks gained a lot. You know, blacks took the whole corner. Right. So that's that's a, an area where we were thinking it was it was less than ten points for white. It was several points. So whites lost something like uh, six six points or so at least. Um, and black has got uh, about eight. It's about fifteen point difference in the lower left mm, corner. That mm. Black has gained. So there's that, and there's the fact that in the in the process of losing this goal, Black's going to capture the whole right side in, with a good position. Black's going to be able to play a co-threat that will finish off the right side, and also will, Black will be able to play the second move on the upper side. So that's what's going to happen eventually in this goal. Mm. Uh, so that's how Black is going to sacrifice this whole group in the center. Um, but, you know, most players, even a pro would sort of assumed that it would be good enough for white to kill this whole whole group because black white has killed most of the group when we were worrying about the black group originally it was just these three stones right and so these are the only stones in, in that group that have have lived and they're not really alive even now um, but we'll get into that and in that's just an end game so like end game. um yeah so like almost the whole group is is dead and this little group in the corner that has lived is something that wasn't even on the board at the time. So white's killed just about everything. But it's, it's, but still, it's not enough. It's not going to be enough. <laughs> uh, so we're so for a while we'll see some fairly straight, uh, some fairly straightforward co threats, and then after a bit we're going to get to some co threats that are a bit more hard to understand. So that's where I'm going to start uh, going into variations again. Um, so this is threatening to move into the center, and white covers the center. So um, at this point, it still seems to make sense. 
And again, white is threatening. These are all very big co-threats in the lower right corner. So black has to follow that. And now here, um, this is maybe a bit more difficult to follow um, because it looks like white wants to cut here. And this would be a disaster. Mm. Uh, you know, if you if you if your opponent played here, this would be the automatic move, I think. But this is going to be really bad because black cuts here, white takes a stone, white black has a forcing move here, and suddenly black has two eyes. So oh, that's that's sort of like oh. a magic. Yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> Woo! So that's um, and again, uh, the only reason I would have think uh, I would have thought of this variation is because. Uh, it actually happened to master. So so you have to wonder why does white play this dummy point instead of playing the the move that seems so obvious. So right. otherwise I wouldn't have been even be thinking of that. Wow. But I got to show you the variation. Um, and so the co continues. Mm. Um, and you can see these moves in the lower left corner are going to be valid co threats too. And so they continue. And so now, now here we see white sort of backs up um, to the left there. Um, when you would think maybe white would want to be more greedy and play at A or something, Absolutely. but that, that would just allow black to get, then black would be getting a lot of co threats still in the, in the center. So the, the value of this move compared to a move at A is white, white is really reducing black's co threats mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. making sure that white can win the call. Um, also, um, to consider the p potential of white. Finishing the call, um, even in this case, Black's not going to be able to save the whole group. Black's going to connect here, and this is forcing. And Black connects. White can cut Black off, and so this center group is dead. You can see Black has sort of Black has saved several stones in the center, and when Black plays here. Um, this final move at B is uh, is a really important big move, and it becomes apparent that this white group, although although the black group is dead for the time being, that white group that I've marked with C is not alive yet. So white's right. going to eventually have to add a, add a stone to capture those those scattered black stones on the outside of the wall. Right. And in the meanwhile, black's going to be able to finish off the territory in the upper right, and that's going to be good enough for black. <coughs> Um, wow. Partially because of all these stones in the center that have been saved. These, these stones here, um, Black's really sort of dug into White's territory a little bit here. So, um, although partially that's uh, inevitable, by cutting here, um, White has saved that group in the center. That this group now is is not going to be cut off because it has that Black stone in Atari. So that's the difference. Although Black can still play at A. To save uh, those four stones, it's going to be less effective because White's group on that the marked White group is alive now, mm -hmm. and White has enough co threats to do that. So Black continues the co. Um, again, all of these co threats in the lower right are co threats that Black cannot ignore. But um, so White has all sorts of co threats. So finally, black plays here. And so black is um, giving up the co at this point. Right. And um, finishing off the right side, that's just a dead white group. That's a big black territory. That is huge. White finishes the co. So the left side is, that's all a dead black group too. And black extends here. <clears throat> and like if black was very timid with this move, you might it, it's a it's a it's sort of at the edge of how far black can go on the left side upper side. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If black had moved that stone one space to the right, mm -hmm. then it would have been a very, very close game. No kidding. Wow. Uh, when black plays here, black has to worry about what happens inside. So um, white jumps here. This is reducing black's area there. Also um, trying to make some white territory. And black extends here. This is a very big move. And so the question, like this is, and again, it takes a huge amount of reading to know that black can capture that white stone with a move like this. This is a move that um, it looks sort of clumsy and bad. It's it's a very effective move in taking away white's eyes. 
would not occur to me in a million years. Well, it turns out black's sort of okay because uh, black <laughs> sort does of, have so, sort of okay. Uh, well, I would be worried with this move, but black yeah. has this connection underneath, and so black's going to win. White could set up some kind of a semi a fight to capture, but it's not going to really work out for white. So, <laughs> uh, so you can see master is getting a bit crazy at this point, starting to play some meaningless move. It, it indicates that master has decided that it's it's not doing very well. <laughs> and again, now 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 the end game turns into a normal, sequence, but um, and this is also a, a valid move. So that's what AlphaGo does um, when it when it realizes it, it's losing. It plays some co threat like moves sometimes, which don't really have any meaning. And this is a double sente move, which is also really big. Um, it's a four point difference when White answers that compared to having white play at this point. And that would be, it's not, it wasn't Sente yet, but any time after this, mm. it's gonna be Sente. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's very well timed that black plays it now. And, and white, and, and again, this is, it's just not working. It's, it's, it's just not working. And um, at the same time, we have these ballad sequences in the center too. Um, and just about something I was talking about earlier, I said that these three stones aren't really saved either. And that's because at any point, white can go after them. Um, but as I was saying, it's just an end game move. It's, it's just a few points. Mm. So white, uh, white can capture these stones, but in the process, uh, white's gonna be, be losing some points on this side. So it's not really such a big difference. In fact, white, might, white will probably just um, ignore the possibility of capturing those stones. And so after this, it's a fairly, um, it would be a fairly straight end game, only, um, only white sort of plays, white is sort of messing up here. Um, and so white is losing some extra points by trying all this stuff inside black's territory. Uh, so there was, a, and it's interesting, in the, in the end they get into a, um, a bent four in the corner. So this is a little, uh, there were other ways black could have killed it but black chose to kill it with the bent four in the corner. So it's an example that um, AlphaGo knows about the bent four in the corner, mm. which is something that, uh, you know, um, in previous versions, it's something that people actually um, might have questioned. It, like we were questioning whether it knew about the, the Sekito squeeze mm -hmm. in game number five. So let's just go back to the end of the game. We can see that's a dead shape in the upper right corner but in order to be able to judge this as a win for black, um, AlphaGo had to be able to, had to know that that's a dead shape. Um, just for the players who don't don't know um, what the bend for is, why don't I make a variation? Yeah, good um, idea. Because black can play like this and like this and like this, and this is a co, but it's a co that black can start because uh, provided black leaves it like this, there's no way that white can play any move there. So black can choose when to play this ko. And so like in the Chinese rules, what black would do after filling all the dame, black would just get rid of all potential ko threats um, because after the game is over, it's okay to fill up your own territories. It's in the Chinese rules, it doesn't make any difference. And so black would just get rid of all potential white ko threats and then play this ko. And as you can see, Black's going to take the code first. So, uh, sorry, I forgot to fill one of the liberties. So Black's, Black's going to fill this liberty too. Right. Uh, it's just, uh, and then, then play that um, variation. Uh, so this is something that in a Chinese rule game, it would be happening after all the dame had been filled. And so the game would be entirely finished. And then finally Black would get rid of the code threats and then kill this. So in actual practice, um, in a Chinese game, it would be, theoretically, it would be played out and black would finally kill this corner anyway. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Japanese rules, um, this, that, that kind of uh, sequence doesn't really work in the Japanese rules. So the Japanese rules have decided that since theoretically black can do that, um, the Japanese rules just call it a dead shape as it stands. Right. Um, and so at this point, um, Master resigned. Um, White has lost a bit in, in all of the stuff White did in the upper right corner. Um, 
White lost some points in, in the struggle there to live. And so it's about 2.75 2 by my county win for black. And that's the Chinese rules, which I think AlphaGo is using here. And in Japanese rules, it would be something like five and a half points. So it's an interesting game, Michael, because, you know, I think you said earlier that, you know, Master didn't really do anything wrong, right? I mean, it, it, it uh, I mean, it, I mean, Alpha goes or, or uh, Zero is the one who sort of got this, you know, touch and go group on the left there. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, it was it was so cheeky. It didn't even try to save it, um, <laughs> and it was playing away so many times. Um, so I couldn't really find any move to fault that Master played. <clears throat> uh, it is a super complicated position that um, I would be a bit nervous playing on either side, but I would be really very, very worried for the black group. Mm -hmm. um, and Zero just handle it very well, um, taking profit all over the board. You can see just looking at this finished position, black's got this huge territory on the right side and the upper right corner, and in the, or the lower left corner too, all of the corners belong to black. So black is getting a huge profit while white, white had to finish off this black group. Interesting. And there was a, while it was five and a half points, I mean, uh, using the <clears> Japanese <throat> system, mm. uh, there was a point in the game where it was a lot closer. It was much closer. It was mm -hmm. just because White lost some points in the upper right corner that it became a fairly large margin. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't as if White was losing by some huge margin, uh, even when after the co trade. Um, wow. If White had played a more reasonable, you'll say, but White, White tried to do something in the upper right corner and lost a few points in the process. But White was losing anyhow. By a very small margin, like um, it would, um, even a human-human game would probably um, call it a, a well-fought game for White too. Right. I, I can't find mistakes. Right, right. Well, <clears throat> and you've looked. <laughs> yeah, I've looked. Yeah, it was an exciting game. Like all that stuff that Zero did with the group and the extra eyes that I was having trouble seeing sometimes. Um, very educational for me. Yeah. A uh, quick question before we wrap up. Um, you know, we've been working on on the AlphaGo book, so you've been going back and, and uh, looking at games, relooking at games. Um, and I think sometimes you know you're you're a little frustrated because you know you it, it's it's a black box for you. You have to you know as you're doing here, sort of reverse engineer it. But it was it was occurring to me that you know, and you talked about this when we we're working on the book, and that it's you know working on these AlphaGo games has made you stronger. I'm thinking it's got to be that the the reading, which you already had really strong reading. I mean, you know, working on your end game work. It, it, this this has got to be helping, right? It's got to be helping. It's forcing me to do a lot more reading than I would usually do reviewing a uh, human pro game. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, it's getting me into a, a better habit of, of um, thinking more analytically. You might, I might, I think so. Mm -hmm. But um, but still, I'm. There are um, positions here where I don't really have a, a, an answer that satisfies me sometimes, and I would mm -hmm. like to ask Zero, what if White plays here, or what if what if this happens. And, you know, if I had access to zero, it would be able to give me a variation um, of where where it wants to play. Right. And so that, that would uh, that would add a different level to the commentary, of course. OK, well, all you uh, deep mind folks are out there watching. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> you've heard the message once again. So, uh, yeah. you know, where, you know where we are. <laughs> yeah. Michael, as always, uh, just a wonderful, fabulous commentary. Um, and I know that everybody's uh, glad to have uh, have this back on their Friday schedule. So thanks, as always. Uh, and as always, one last thing before we go. Uh, I do want to give another big, big thanks to our AGA members who make videos like this possible. And if you'd like to support this content as well, and we hope you do, please consider joining the American Go Association. Just go to usgo.org. Thanks again, and we'll see you all next week.